Tonight, the growing nightmare in Texas and the extreme weather crippling the COVID vaccine rollout. 13 million people, nearly half of the Texas population under boil water notices. Massive lines for food, store shelves bare, hydrants frozen. Firefighters battling an inferno forced to truck in water. Burst pipes, billions in damages, and the anger why some are seeing energy bills in the thousands. Senator Ted Cruz in damage control. He now says it was a mistake to fly off to Cancun while his state is in crisis. The text messages from his wife, what they reveal about the last minute trip. President Biden touring Pfizer's vaccine plant as winter storms delay the rollout in all 50 states. Six million doses backlogged, 2,000 sites shut down. But the news today about the Pfizer vaccine giving new hope. The outrage in Florida, body cam of two women accused of disguising themselves as grandmothers to get the vaccine. Also, the wealthy zip codes getting more access when the governor is confronted, his angry response. Our series, Kids Under Pressure, is the pandemic putting these teens at risk of becoming a lost generation. And first images, the red planet like you've never seen it before. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening and welcome. Above freezing temperatures offering some relief in Texas, but the end of the misery is not yet in sight as 13 million remain without safe water. Frozen pipes now thawing, raising new risks this evening. Tonight, bottled water being handed out. Shelves at some grocery stores are bare. And we're also learning of the cold-related death of a young child. I spoke to the mayor of Austin a short time ago to get a late update. I'll have that in just a moment. Also tonight, some of the weather that Slam Texas put the brakes on COVID vaccine distributions nationwide. We're going to tell you how bad the impact was. But we begin, of course, in Texas. Morgan Chesky with the very latest. Tonight in Texas, too much water. My room is ruined. Oh my God. Or not enough. This is the only water that we have now, so it's hard. What's left? Potentially unsafe to drink. The deep freeze compromising supply for 13 million Texans. First responders hurting too. This San Antonio apartment fire forcing fire crews to truck in water after they found hydrants frozen. Our problem is if we get a little bit ahead and, and then uh, the water runs out. Brutal cold also a likely factor in the death of 11-year-old Christian Pavone, seen playing in the snow 24 hours before his parents found him dead in his room. The suspected cause, hypothermia, the family's mobile home without power or heat. Tonight, the state's power grid improving. Any outages left are from damaged lines and not over demand. We are completely back to normal operation as of now. But for many, living conditions, anything but normal. At some grocery stores, shelves still bare. With warmer weather finally on the way, scenes like this could soon be disappearing. But for a growing number of Texans, a brand new and expensive storm is just getting started. Our heat went out. We also have pipes that busted. Akilah Scott Amos also dealing with a skyrocketing energy bill. Her usual $40 payment, now $9,000. Why? Her provider, Gritty Energy, charges her on a variable rate plan, the rate set by a public utility commission. When the storm hit, the emergency drove up the cost of her bill. Can you afford that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That is... Three mortgage payments. For now, Akila and millions of others facing one more night below freezing before a winter nightmare finally starts to end. And Morgan, with it warming up there, I understand there are some new concerns now. Yeah, Lester, you're right with the temperature rising above freezing now for the next several days. All those water lines and pipes that have been frozen solid could cause even more damage when they start to thaw. Lester. All right, Morgan, thanks. I just spoke to the mayor of Austin, Steve Adler, who told me why they are still not through this. Mayor Adler, thank you for joining us. What do you folks need most right now as you head into the weekend? We need water uh, more than anything else. Uh, you know, it is one plague after another. Uh, the one we're dealing with right now is uh, it's the absence of, of water in the city. Uh, we need people that are volunteering and helping one another. You've got pipes that have been frozen for days. Presumably they're starting to thaw um, and that could bring its own problems. Is it possible this is going to get worse before it gets better? 
You know, it's it, we have we have about two thirds of the city right now that doesn't have water. Uh, I don't think it's going to get much worse than that. But it's the, it's the question of duration. Uh, my community wants to know when this is going to be over. Uh, many of them went almost a week without power, uh, and now they 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 don't have water. When the water comes back, we're having to boil it. Uh, but it's looking like at least several more days. We're also still in the middle of winter. We don't know with climate change what comes next. We've heard a lot about the power grid in Texas, its vulnerability. But looking down the pike, just the last the next several weeks here, are you worried about a repeat? You know, this was such a rare event. I don't think we're going to see it again in the next several weeks. But I'll tell you, I can't, I'm not convinced it won't happen next year. This is the third time I've seen this happen. We're having more and more extreme weather events. We have to harden our system in this state. Uh, we have to change the regulatory structure to make sure that that gets in incentivized. And what are you telling your residents tonight? I'm telling them I'm sorry. I mean, people in this community are being asked to do things that, that they should never be asked to do and, and enduring conditions they shouldn't have to, to endure. We need better answers from the state with respect to what happened with the grid. Uh, but right now, I need to get my folks water and food and, and, and warmth. All right. Well, Mayor Adler, thank you for spending a few moments with us tonight. We wish you all the best of luck there. Lester, thank you. And if you would like to help those in need, you'll find the information on our NBC Nightly News Facebook page. Now, there's new fallout tonight from that trip to Mexico by Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Gabe Gutierrez has the latest on that. Senator Ted Cruz now admits his whirlwind trip to Cancun during an intensifying weather crisis was a mistake. I'd initially planned to stay through the weekend and to work remotely there, but, but as, I, as I was heading down there, I, you know, I started to have second thoughts almost immediately because the crisis here in Texas. But he got a frosty reception. The Houston Chronicle says Texans' anger with Cruz right now could power an entire electric grid. He needs to show up and act like he cares. How, how could he go on vacation like this? This is ridiculous. Cruz says his young daughters asked to go on the trip and that he was still in communication with state and local officials. But adding to the outcry, the New York Times reports a series of text messages from Cruz's wife Heidi to friends and neighbors shows the trip was hastily planned. Mrs. Cruz telling friends her house was freezing, proposing a vacation until Sunday and inviting others to join the Cruises at the Ritz-Carlton in Cancun. The paper says the messages were confirmed by a second person on the text chain who declined to be identified. When things are happening on, our, on the ship, we, we simply we stay on the ship. And um, and and that's that's the commitment that we make when we sign up for for these for these positions. Cruz's office today did not respond to requests for comment about those reported texts. Lester. All right, Gabe, thank you. This week's weather is still having a ripple effect on the covid vaccine effort. Almost 42 million Americans have now received at least one dose. Hospitalizations now at just over 62,000. Miguel Almaguer with more tonight. Tonight, as brutal weather finally begins to clear, its impact on the race to vaccinate Americans is coming into view. The White House says six million doses were delayed to all 50 states because of three days of shipping problems. This map shows the footprint of the storm, but its reach stretched coast to coast. I keep on saying they don't have it. Or oh, they don't have enough vaccination or they don't have the appointments. When more than 2,000 vaccination centers lost power, including hospitals and clinics, authorities scrambled to inoculate anyone they could. Lines forming at this Texas synagogue when word spread, doses were about to expire. Outside of the storm, in Florida, authorities say more than 200,000 doses expected this week are delayed. 133,000 vaccines in Colorado are also behind schedule. Still coping with serious distribution problems, even vaccination centers in California have shut down, but they could reopen tomorrow. With 1.4 million doses in transit today, Pfizer is hoping to ease its complicated system of shipping and storage, seeking FDA approval to store its vaccine in regular freezers for up to two weeks instead of those hard to find ultra cold freezers. 
And now, roughly a year into the pandemic, there's been a five-week decline in COVID cases as hospitalizations and deaths also slow. Jill Holker, a frontline nurse who needed a double lung transplant after becoming infected, is going home today after months in the hospital. It's a long process that I had to go through, and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Tonight, the war against COVID continues, but battles are being won. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. In just 60 seconds, vaccine cheaters caught in the act. How some are using deception to get the shots, plus the country vaccinating people faster than any other. There's outrage tonight over the steps some are taking to get themselves vaccinated and concern that not everyone may have the same chance. Kerry Sanders is in Florida. In Florida, some so desperate to get vaccinated, they're dressing up like grannies, according to health officials. You've stolen a vaccine from somebody that needs it more than you. Police body cam shows the two women in their 30s and 40s who tried to get a second vaccine after using the ruse successfully to get their first dose. While controversy surrounds a vaccine pop-up ordered by the governor for just two zip codes. Something's wrong with this whole system here. When the governor was questioned this week why the eligible are overwhelmingly white and Republican, he fired back. If Manatee County doesn't like us doing this, then we are totally fine with putting this in counties that want it. Those unable to even schedule a vaccine appointment, not happy. I guess it's who you know that counts. An NBC News examination of how Florida has distributed the vaccine shows red counties in the state getting more shots per capita than blue counties. Florida's emergency operations director aggressively disputes political favoritism, saying doses are given based on a mathematical formula. I do not think that our governor should be dictating who lives and who dies. That if you happen to have money, you, you get the golden ticket. The fear tonight, a growing distrust that vaccine playing fields are not level. Lester? Kerry Sanders, thank you. President Biden got a firsthand look inside the COVID vaccine effort today. The White House also rolling back a Trump immigration policy. Peter Alexander is at the White House this evening. Peter, what's the latest? Hey, Lester, good evening. President Biden today touring Pfizer's plant in Michigan, its largest in the country, as the White House announced five new federal vaccination centers, one in Philadelphia, four others across Florida, where they'll be able to deliver 12,000 shots a day. Meanwhile, the Biden administration today beginning to roll back one of former President Trump's signature immigration policies, starting to allow thousands of migrants applying for asylum to wait in the U.S. for their court hearings. Former President Trump had mandated they wait in Mexico, arguing it prevented a surge of migrants. But the Biden administration said that exposed asylum seekers to violence south of the border. Lester. All right, Peter, thank you. President Biden also gave his first major speech to an international audience and drew a sharp contrast with former President Trump. Let's get more on this now from Andrea Mitchell. Washington, D.C. Tonight, a reset on the world stage. Hello, President Thank Biden so making much. good on a promise he made as just Joe Biden two years ago. We will be back. And I'm a man of my word. America is back. Reversing Donald Trump's decisions to quit the Iran nuclear deal, the Paris Climate Accords, and to pull U.S. troops out of Germany. I know the past few years have strained and tested our transatlantic relationship. But the United States is determined determined to re-engage with Europe. On Iran, offering to join talks with Tehran to go back to the limits on nuclear fuel production, but also expand the deal to control Iran's missiles and other behavior. We must also address Iran's destabilizing activities across the Middle East. But it is a game of chicken. Iran is threatening to block U.N. weapons inspectors next week, unless the U.S. first lifts the Trump economic sanctions. The U.S. says it won't lift sanctions until Iran stops violating the nuclear deal. An even tougher long-term challenge, climate change. We're talking about security, energy security, economic security, food security, even physical security. Iran has not yet responded to the U.S. offer to talk, but some leading Republicans are already opposing any talks with Iran and the U.S. making the first move. Lester. Andrea Mitchell, thank you. No country is vaccinating its people faster than Israel, where almost half have received at least one dose. With more on that, here's Richard Engel. They're getting creative in Israel to encourage people to be vaccinated. At a bar turned vaccination center, a free shot for every shot. Teenagers are now up 
90% of people over age 60 have already had at least one dose. Doctors say the impact is profound. We can find some small amount of patients that are positive, but they are not sick. So the vaccine gives very, very good protection from severe disease. It's proof vaccines, here it's mostly Pfizer, can end the pandemic. But per capita, the United States remains far behind. How many people had to get vaccinated by percentage? And it's only at this point that we are beginning to see the effect. So the equivalent in the U.S. would be at the point where you vaccinated 150 million people. Israel's population is small, healthcare is centralized and mandatory, and the country's many wars have made it quick to respond to a crisis. All factors helping Israel lead the world in coming out of COVID lockdown. In Israel, fully vaccinated people will receive green passes, allowing them to go to gyms and attend cultural and sporting events. They're setting up special travel certificates as well. Lester? Richard Angle tonight, thanks. And be sure to join Richard for On Assignment, COVID Mutants. That's Sunday night at 10 Eastern on MSNBC. Up next for us tonight, could there be a lost generation because of this pandemic? We're back now with our series, Kids Under Pressure. And what we found in our study, teens in marginalized communities hit especially hard by the pandemic. Here's Gotti Schwartz. It's a school night, and Nayeli Camarillo is packing to go to work with her parents. They clean houses and restaurants, but because of the pandemic, jobs have been sporadic. So you guys are basically rationing your food so you can keep paying the rent? Yes. For Nayeli, virtual learning means trying to listen to Zoom classes on her headphones when she's vacuuming someone's house or working late into the night. What time do you usually get home? I'll get home like around 12 or 1. 12 or 1 in the morning? Morning. And then the next day? The over same. And over again. Yes. Our study found 63% of black and Latino students report an increase in school related stress, nearly 10% more than white students. At El Cerrito High School in California's Bay Area, Latino students are twice as likely to miss a day of school because of health or an emotional problem, and 95% report being physically affected by stress or anxiety. Let me ask just a quick show of hands. Uh, how many of you guys are stressed about money? I have to help my, my family, and I'm worried about, like, them losing their jobs or them not getting enough money. Have you struggled with, with yes. depression through this? A lot. Yeah. For senior Julio Flores, work is 36 hours a week, while also trying to make sure his little brother and sister don't fall behind. So not only are you working and not only are you going to school, but you're also helping your, your little siblings <laughs> yeah. go to class too? Yeah. And you know, like, I just try to help around the house sometimes. In the beginning, you know, I wasn't that good at it, but you know, later on I started to understand, build that habit of being disciplined. Their principal says that's common. They've got to cook for their siblings. Their siblings, you know, they might have to change diapers. While they're also trying to listen to a lecture or learn pre-calculus, that's a lot to juggle for a teenager. And to be expected to learn. And to get good grades. I think my biggest fear is that I'm going to have students whose grades are going to go down because they've got to support their families. And their dreams of going to college right after high school will probably be impacted and shattered. It seems like you, you really want to learn. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to learn. Like right now, it's my last year, and I'm just trying to get my credits, get everything done. But as Nayeli tries to graduate, her plans for a community college will have to be put on hold. They can't afford it. So for now, her dream is deferred. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, El Cerrito, California. Boy, those kids carrying a heavy load. We're getting a look at the first images from NASA's Perseverance Mars rover. One shows the rover in midair just before touchdown. Also, the rover's first high-resolution color image of the planet's surface. You can see that red tint and a close-up of one of the wheels in the Martian dirt. Up next here tonight, the big heart of Texas. Finally, back to Texas, where folks don't have to look far for help. Texas has lost a lot this week, but not its heart. Jim McInvale didn't have to think twice before opening his sprawling Houston furniture store as a shelter. It immediately struck you that you, you could do this, you could open a shelter. We've been through a lot of chaotic times. We had to make an adjustment here because, you know, let's face it, my people were freezing. I can't let them freeze. 
It's not the first time he's welcomed strangers. He did it after Hurricanes Katrina and Harvey. It was nice to get a warm meal, you know, keep us going for the next day. In Abilene, this fitness center sprang into action, converting the gym floor into a shelter. As soon as we found out that we had both heat and water, we knew that we had to do something to help our community. It's a pretty remarkable thing that they did. Got hot showers. We hung out for as long as we wanted to, just in the warmth, because it was cold out there. Elsewhere, neighbors shared generators for power. We powered three houses with one little generator when we had no power for 36 hours. Those who could cooked food. Others have gone door to door delivering supplies. There's probably 12 waters in right there. Do you need any more? There's a lot of people that, that need help. Like you didn't wait for someone to ask you. You stepped in. You saw the need. Is there a, a message you want to send? There's so much function on who's to blame. Let's not blame people. Let's just fix the problem. I was taught that the essence of living is giving, and I'll go to my grave with that as my saying. Man, I'll take that one. Texans showing they can weather any storm together. That's all you. And that's nightly news for this Friday. Thanks for watching. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other.